Our final question of the day on the show comes to us from Drew. He is in Little Rock, and he writes, What is the impact of inflation on my 401k? Do I need to do anything differently during periods of high inflation? Boy, great question from Drew, and, and we have experienced this in 2022 for sure, especially later into the year in 2022 as that downturn we went through. We were down the S&P 500 index down about 19% in calendar year 2022. And a lot of people were dealing with inflation, high inflation at the same time, Johnny. You think about, hey, I'm having a hard time paying for things and everything I've saved is going to pot over here, right? That was the mentality. And I understand that. It makes you want to do something different in your 401k. And this is where persistency and focus really comes into play. If you think about what has happened, if you persisted through that downturn that we had in 2022, yeah. so far this year, the S&P 500, get this, is up 19%. Now, it may not feel like it, may not have seemed that way by watching the news or listening to your buddies at the water cooler, <laughs> but the S&P 500 is up as of our day of our recording, up 19%. So things do bounce back and, and the things tend to be cyclical. What is a real problem when things like this happen, and of course this downturn was was really instigated by uh, not only inflation ticking up, but the Fed responding with a higher and higher interest rates over time, being very aggressive about that. And so what tends to happen when the market goes down is t- people tend to pull back on putting money into their 401k, which is exactly the opposite of what you should be doing, because the prices on your 401k investments are down during that time, it allows you to put money in and buy additional shares. So if you are, if you have a long-term view and you are being persistent about what you're doing and you don't deviate from your plan, then you actually can take advantage of what a short-term uh, suppression in, in price might give you. And then uh, if you were buying during that downturn and now those shares are worth 19% more, let's say, then that's actually a pretty good thing. So you got to avoid that tendency to stop putting money in your 401k plan. Yeah, and one of the things I would mention here too is is uh, if you don't if you haven't signed up for the fastest four minutes in finance, this would be a good time if this question interests you to do that for Drew or anybody else listening. There was a Morning Star study that just came out uh, last week, I believe, or maybe even earlier this week, that did a study over the last ten years of the performance of the average mutual fund Mm -hmm. and compared it to the average dollars by the investors that were in that same mutual fund and they underperformed, right? So the, talking about the timing of exactly. when they when they invested, when they redeemed those mutual fund shares, that type of thing. Yes, and the average mutual fund a- averaged 7.7% a year over the last 10 years and the average investor averaged 6. Now that doesn't seem like a big annual difference, but over, over 10 time. years, that's a huge difference yeah. and it's all because of our tendencies uh, it was called mind the gap, and that's the gap. It's between yep. investors wanting to get out and get in rather than just stay invested. Drew, here is the truth for you. There are only two asset classes, broadly speaking, that have ever outpaced inflation over the long term. One of them is equities, meaning mutual funds that are invested in stocks of, of great companies, and also real estate. Those two asset classes, equities and real estate, have historically outperformed inflation over time. Now, you can take short-term periods like this past year where real estate and equities were both down compared to inflation, and you can beat that up in that short period of time if you want to, but you're not living in a short period of time. You're living in a long period of time. And the only two asset classes that have historically outperformed inflation, equities, and real estate. I did not mention how you can sign up for the fastest four. Just text the word FAST to 501-381-5228. It's the number you need to write down. We use it for everything, right? 501-381-5228. Text the word FAST. That'll get you signed up. Or you can go to our website, getreadyforthefuture.com. It's really easy to just put in an email. It's delivered to your email inbox every Friday morning. We are not going to call you. We're not going to try to uh, annoy you with a bunch of other emails. It's just a simple four minutes or less video Uh, that is a commentary about what's going on in the markets uh, and the economy. Now, Drew doesn't tell us, John, how old he is, but if he's asking, do I need to do anything differently during periods of high inflation, I would say not likely. 
And if you're younger, you need to always just ride this thing out because equities are long-term investments. But if you are inside of 10 years from potentially needing some of these dollars, a change in investment strategy according to a written plan may be necessary, and not because of high inflation, but just because of everything that's going to happen to you in retirement. Yeah, that's true. And and one of the big things that he has to think about in regard to inflation is if he is near retirement, how is he going to keep up his income on pace with inflation? Right. I think that a lot of people uh, can get locked into a, a situation where they've got a set amount of income going into retirement, but then 10 years later, they figure out they're kind of behind the eight ball because their income that they're getting, their check that they're getting, isn't buying as much as it used to, mm-hmm. and they don't have any way to increase that income. 